Hello everybody and welcome! This is it, the final update for Kerbal Space Program for PC, KSP 1.12, dubbed on Final Approach. It is going to release one day after this video and if you're wondering how that is possible, well, I was given the opportunity to check out a preview version of the update. So keep in mind everything you see here is based on this preview version and could look or behave a little bit different in the final release. Also, if you were just taken aback by me calling this the final update for Kerbal Space Program, I already did a video where I explained why this is and what is going to happen with the game and its sequel Kerbal Space Program 2 going forward. Link is in the description if you want to watch or re-watch that. Speaking of watching, please stay with me until the end because I want to add a few thoughts of my own regarding the fact that Kerbal Space Program will no longer be actively developed. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into it and look at 12 highlights in KSP 1.12 on Final Approach. New Parts As is now tradition with a new KSP update, there are some new and revamped parts. This time around it's mainly solar panels. Basically there's two types in a retractable and non-retractable variant. A circular solar panel similar to what the Cygnus space freighter uses in the real world. And a larger single row solar panel that might fit well on an Orion replica. If you have purchased the Making History expansion, you will now have access to a new smaller engine plate with 1.25 meter diameter. And yes, it too offers multiple attachment points which could lead to miniature Falcon 9-like contraptions. This pretty much rounds out the engine plate offering aside from 0.625 meter parts, but those usually are not used for atmospheric staging, which is the main purpose of these parts. In addition to the new parts, the behavior of some parts has changed. You now can attach other parts to the surfaces of the cylindrical xenon container as well as two monopropellant tanks. While this may seem like a small improvement, it enhances your options when building vehicles, especially smaller probes. And since this update is also a celebration of 10 years of Kerbal Space Program, we now have fireworks launchers. You can tweak quite a few things to modify the look of your fireworks but they only work in an atmosphere. On the moon you only get a small detonation. I mentioned part revamps. All docking ports were overhauled and now offer a completely new look. Aside from the smallest one, each docking port now includes a window which in real life could be used to judge the distance when approaching another vessel manually. Of course, in the real world, spacecraft like SpaceX's Crew Dragon as well as the Soyuz do all their docking automatically. But just in case, it's always good to have a fallback. At least in real life, the KSP docking ports don't actually enable you to look through them. But speaking of docking ports, this is a great segue to my next item. Rotating docking ports. Have you ever had the issue that you had to dock vehicles together really precisely to line their parts up correctly and started banging your head on your desk in frustration because the rotation would always be off by a small margin? Well, KSP 1.12 is here to save you from desk-related concussions. A new feature enables you to rotate docking ports. Once the two vehicles have docked, you can rotate each port 15 degrees left or right. It will only rotate full degrees, no fractions, so you might still end up just a little misaligned if you are off 3.4 degrees instead of a straight 3 degrees. And once you have correctly oriented your docked segments, you can go on a relaxed spacewalk. Which actually leads to my next item. New actions. You can do a few more things now with your vehicle. The game offers you to disconnect struts and fuel lines since the new update. While I personally won't have a lot of use for that at the moment, this might open up new ways to build vehicles and modify them in flight when a certain mission milestone has been reached. There's also a new entry in the cheat menu, which enables your engineer to ignore the mass and volume limits for stuff he or she can carry. I am pretty sure this is going to be abused fairly soon. And while you think about ways to use these new options, 
you can also use something else that has been introduced with KSP 1.12. New threads. I've showed you the regular spacesuit until now, but there is now also a new one. The so-called slim suit, and it appears to be a nod to the suits SpaceX has developed for Crew Dragon. Very sleek and modern compared to the original Kerbal space suit. But that original suit now has a new detail to watch out for. On your Kerbal's right arm, you will now see the 10-year anniversary patch embroidered in gold on their suits. A nice little touch to commemorate 10 years of Kerbal Space Program. Speaking of visuals, this is another thing I want to talk about. Prettier planets. Well, one planet to be exact, Elu, and one moon, Paul. With the texture revamp of these two, the overall beautification of Kerbal Space Program's planetary bodies is concluded. I am glad that all of them got the visual treatment the game deserves, even though we can suspect they will look even prettier in the upcoming Kerbal Space Program 2. But that is still a year away, so let's uh, enjoy the view that we have for the time being. But while we're on the surface, let's talk about something that got me excited when I first heard about it. Ground Anchor. Okay, this is a little bit embarrassing. I wanted to show you the new ground anchor part that was mentioned in one of the KSP loading announcements on the Kerbal Space Program forums, but it appears there were some technical difficulties with it and it was not present in the version I got to try out. However, I was assured that it will find its way into the upcoming KSP 1.12.1 patch, which is already in preparation. I'm not sure if this will finally enable us to build a hanging base from one of the moon archers with our cheats or mods, but there is only one way to find out. Wait until that part is available and then experiment with it, see how well it can keep things grounded. Speaking of grounded, something else was improved. Wheels and landing gear. The behavior of landing gear and wheels in Kerbal Space Program has been a point of contention ever since they were introduced to the game. Landing gear in all previous versions was prone to sliding down inclines or to make everything bounce around. And wheels were also known to awaken the Kraken from time to time. In KSP 1.12, the changelog promises that wheels and landing leg suspension now spreads weight across all grounded parts. Also, the friction model has been changed and is supposedly more realistic. And rover wheels have a modified steering response, which is intended to reduce the steering angle when driving at high speeds. This should prevent you wiping out your fragile rover just because you pressed the left or right key a bit too hard. Indeed, flipping a rover at high speed is now a lot harder than before. On the flip side, you can't take corners as fast, which is a bit of a pity in some cases. But overall, this will reduce your rover headaches a lot. Now, while it's easy to see where you're going when you are driving on the surface, navigation in space is not so trivial. But the on final approach update has got you covered. Transfer Window Planner if the title of this item sounds familiar, then you have already heard of or used the mod of the same name. It calculates the best point in time and the amount of delta-v needed to perform a transfer maneuver to another planet or moon. This is also true for the stock implementation called Maneuver Tool and makes it really useful, especially for people that have trouble traveling to anything outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Not only does it show you all potential transfer windows in a separate view and displays the journey in visual form, it also allows you to create a maneuver that will get you to your desired destination. Basically what happened is that the transfer window planner mod is now stock in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. But the mod still has a few advantages for experienced players, for instance enabling them to use it while in the VAB. The stock maneuver tool requires you to be in a circular orbit before it can work its magic. Yes, this is an implementation of a beloved mod into the stock game, but before you get out your torches and pitchforks to lambast the poaching of mods, keep in mind that Trigger AU, the creator of Transfer Window Planner, is officially part of the Kerbal Space Program development team and has done the integration himself. But not only did he integrate this, he also did the next thing. 
Alarm Clock. If you know my video where I list my favorite mods, you will remember that Kerbal Alarm Clock is one of the mods I cannot live without. It enables you to set an alarm which notifies you when your vessel is due to perform a maneuver or is about to enter the sphere of influence of a planet. While the transfer window planner has quite a few differences, alarm clock is almost identical to the mod. Which is a good thing. Again, mod creator TriggerAU has integrated his extremely useful mod as part of the stock game, so it can now serve all players who upgrade to KSP 1.12. Speaking of useful, organizing vehicles. On Final Approach introduces the ability to organize your craft into folders. Up until now, you could either save a vehicle in the space plane hangar or vehicle assembly building. Now the game will offer you to open any vehicle from any save game, showing you the saves on the left with the number of craft in parentheses. Thanks to this feature, the option No Stock Vessels has been removed from the settings because they do no longer clutter your view unless you want to. You can select the Subfolders option to display which vessel belongs to which subfolder or display all vessels from all save games. If you have a large number of vehicles, this can take some time to load. You can also create a new folder right there in the game. But you cannot move craft files. What you can do is choose into which subfolder of your current save game you want the vehicle to be stored. This is great if you want to organize your vehicles by mission type, for instance all Uniships in one folder and all EVE landers in another. And if you are not sure where exactly a specific craft is, you can use the search bar to look for it, as long as you know at least part of the name. I think this is a nice addition and is going to make organizing a large heap of vehicles a lot easier. And there is more that is going to make your Kerbal life less tedious. Hopefully. Under the hood. All in all, the 1.12 update fixes more than 80 bugs as well as localization issues. In addition to that, the game has been upgraded to a long-term support version of Unity, the game engine that was used to create Kerbal Space Program. If you want the precise version, it's Unity 2019.4.18 F1 LTS. That's a mouthful. According to Unity themselves, this version should receive updates until mid-2022. So if there is an issue related to the engine, an upcoming patch for KSP 1.12 could still fix this within that time frame. And of course, we all hope that Kerbal Space Program 2 will be out by then. I only had a brief time to play around with this preview version of 1.12, but it managed to behave during this period. That being said, it is already confirmed that a version 1.12.1 is in the works and will be released shortly after. When exactly is not known right now. Something else that is not known is another thing. Easter eggs? When you start Kerbal Space Program 1.12 for the first time, a little window will tell you a bit about the update. One thing it mentions is new easter eggs to discover, which got my curiosity piqued. KSP already has a number of known easter eggs, there's the pyramids in the desert west of the Kerbal Space Center, there are multiple monoliths distributed across the solar system, and there's a dead kraken on Jules Moon Bob, just to name a few of these curiosities. I did not have the time to discover any of the advertised new easter eggs, and even if I did, I would probably not tell you. Go out there and find them yourselves. Well, at least we have a reason to explore a 10 year old game again. So this is it, the highlights of the final PC update for Kerbal Space Program. This game has come a long way in the 10 wonderful years it has brought us joy and a better understanding of spaceflight. It's a bittersweet moment, really. On the one hand, we can be glad that this game has endured for so long. On the other hand, there will never be another content update for PC. I'm pretty sure that the console version will receive a lot of stuff us PC players have gotten over the past years, but I'm not holding my breath that everything will make it into the so-called enhanced edition. Speaking of not everything, I'm sure there are some features or fixes that some of you would have liked to see in the final update. Everybody has their pet peeve. Mine is missing attachment nodes for the shielded docking ports. 
Sometimes when I build more complex vehicles, I want to launch them with stuff attached to these ports, but can't because there's a node missing. But I am just one person and the team has to use their limited resources to deliver the best overall outcome for KSP players. But hey, maybe you can tell us in the comments what your pet peeve for Kerbal Space Program is that you haven't seen addressed yet. Well, but honestly, it's now a little bit late. But there will always be mods. Yes, some of you have already commented below my previous video that the final version of Kerbal Space Program might reinvigorate the modding scene. With no more major versions down the line, mods will no longer break after an update. Maybe Realism Overhaul will be able to reach its final form now, or other gems like the Outer Planets mod or various visual mods. Stopping active development for KSP does not mean it is finished. It might even experience a renaissance for a year until Kerbal Space Program 2 will come along and change the landscape again. So with this outlook, I want to come to a very important point I already touched on in my previous video. A big and heartfelt thank you to everybody who has worked on Kerbal Space Program over the past 10 years. First and foremost, of course, Felipe Falang, also known as Harvester, who has left the game already a few years ago. I sifted through the release notes of various KSP versions and compiled a list of the people directly involved with the game through the development studio squad in one way or another, sorted by first name in alphabetical order. You may recognize some of the AKAs if you are a frequent forums user or have used a few of their mods. But I'll shut up now and I hope you join me in appreciating all the work these people did to deliver us our favorite space game. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.